Hello and welcome to this short video about Jaguar XK8 10 Facts About AJV8 Timing Gear. This is episode 08 in my series of XK8 videos on my cam chains and tensioners. In this video, I'm going to show you the 10 facts I learned when changing mine. If you don't know already, I have a, a YouTube channel all based on XK8. If you're interested in XK8, please subscribe, please like, and tick, etc. etc. Anyway, on with the show. My car is a 1996 XK8. Everything was great until it developed a rattle at startup and ended up doing the cam chains and tensioners. So what I want to do is share with you 10 facts I learned along the way. Uh, as I did the cam chain tensioners, I actually uh, recorded 50 videos from taking the bonnet off through to actually uh, how to start the car up, fill the uh, fluids back up. So if you're interested, please look at the, uh, the tensioner playlist in my YouTube channel. Okay, fact number one. What is the basic problem? The basic problem is the engine used in the XK8 and the XKR is the AJ V8 series engine. It's an interference engine. What does that mean? An interference engine is a type of four-stroke internal combustion piston engine in which one or more of the valves in the fully open position extends into any area through which the piston may travel. So basically this means that if the timing is not completely correct between the valves and the pistons, they can touch and damage each other. It's even more critical with the AJ26 and AJ27 uh, normally aspirated because um, they have variable valve timing. So the extent to which the valves intrude into the piston area is even higher in some parts of the, uh, the cycle. To such a point that you see in the, the right here, the piston tops are actually scalloped to relieve some area where they may actually clash. The, just a basic explanation of the timing gear. The, uh, on an XK8, it uses the AGA engine as I said already, and it doesn't have belts, it has chains. And it has four chains. Two large chains, which are the primary chains, coming from the crankshaft to the cams and two smaller chains linking the two camshafts together. Now the weak point and the rattle at startup is coming from the secondary chain tensioner which I've circled in right here on the left hand side bank. When those develop problems you get a rattle and that is the, the start of problems. If that, if that chain uh, jumps one uh, tooth you'll get rough idle. If it jumps two tooths the valves will hit the cylinder tops. Then you, the engine is basically needs a complete rebuild. Question two, tensioner types. So the secondary tensioner has had actually three iterations. Rev1, uh, which has part number NAC2017BE uh, for the left hand bank, AF for the right hand, was fully plastic and was from the start of manufacture. The Rev2 tensioner was the development of that with a spring. Is uh, part number AJ87694-3. And that was from engine number 980112106.00. You can see that it's referenced in TSP303-30. So that was Jaguar's first attempt at fixing this um, uh, rattle at startup. Not successful. So even if you've got Rev2 tensioners, they're still no good. The one you really want is the Rev3, which everybody refers to as the metal tensioner, or part number C2A1512, left hand bank, uh, or the one for the right hand bank. Those are fully metal, and they got improved plastics. They're from engine number 01081300. Fact number three. What does that engine number mean? <coughs> so the engine number is not a sequential number. It's actually a date. The first and second digits of the year of manufacture, the third and fourth digits of the month, fifth and sixth digits of the day, seventh and eighth the hour, ninth and tenth the minute. So you can find out the minute your car was completed or your engine was completely manufactured. Quite interesting. So what, the, what we're saying really is from the 13th of August 2001 at midnight, all engines after that time and date had metal tensioners, and secondary cam tensioners, or roughly model year 2002. 
How do you find your engine number? Look in your documents first. You'll find it somewhere hidden in there, whether it's your V5C registration document in the UK or a sales invoice or even your service history. It's in the vehicle identification section of your service history. If you like getting your hands dirty and you need to cross-reference it on the engine. Okay, so where is the engine number? It's actually located down here. I put a light here to help trying to view it. See if we can get a good view of it. There you go. Can you see it there? Um, it's literally d down there. You can see my engine number there. If you move around, you can get to see part of the front of the number, then you can get the bar part of the back by manoeuvring. So my my car was actually 1996. So mine was basically up to model year 2001 uh, engine number. So the engine number in that case is located on that surface I showed you, left hand side of the water tower, and the number can be viewed from above. If your car is slightly later, basically from model year 2001, the engine number, they've moved it so we're somewhere we can't see it. Thanks, Jaguar. The engine number is located on a vertical rib on the left-hand side of the block, just above the steering rack. Now, the number can be viewed from underneath with mirrors, but it's awkward. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have the car, fortunately, I don't have a car uh, that, that young, so I don't have that problem. Fact number four, what are the failure modes? So basically, on the engine, you've got the primary and the secondary timing gear. The primary gear tends to be quite reliable. The, the problem is with the secondary cam change engine is. So here you have a initial version secondary cam chain tensioner. So now how these work, basically the, the chain is, uh, rests along the top here, runs round the cam chain sprocket and the slack is taken up by this hydraulic piston that's fed from the oil system around and then the chain goes around the, the other cam chain um, sprocket and across the top so the, the chain's running top and bottom of this cam chain tensioner now the way it works is it actually gets oil fed through the bottom from the uh, engine oil and uh, that oil actually pressurizes this hydraulic cylinder um, normally the hydraulic cylinder has a non-return valve so once it's pressurized it's fixed so it's it's got tension on it all the time so it's taken out all the slack and that's how they work normally now there's two types of failure for this one is actually the loss of that that high, uh, oil pressure at startup so what tends to happen the body you see here is started to crack on mine but it, it wasn't at the point of failure. I've actually released some of the oil from this, but you can see it's still maintaining some pressure. So basically what's happened here, if that crack runs along too far, the first failure mode then is lack of oil pressure at startup. So it's the non-return valve becomes useless because the oil leaks out of the crack. So before you, you start the engine up, the cylinder is, pr is allowing maximum uh, chain uh, or lack of chain tension and the ability of the, the chain just to jump a sprocket before the oil pressure is built up enough despite the leak to pressurize the cylinder and take the slack out of the chain. So that's the first failure mode. The second one which seems to be a little bit more common because they did um, the Rev the Rev 2 version of this cam chain tension actually was to add a spring to, to get rid of that issue so that at startup if you did have a slight crack the spring would make t maintain the, the initial pressure. Um, so the Jaguar got around that first failure mode with the, the spring, the, the Rev2 cam chain tensioners. Um, but the other one, which is, seems a little bit more common, is actually the second failure mode. It's actually these sort of um, wear, the, the plastic tops, where the chain actually wears again. You can see the, the grooves of the chain have worn in the top one. But the bottom one, or the top and the bottom, well, the bottom one, which actually is um, wrapped around the metal metal um, end, these actually come off and they break away. You can see this is all cracked. They break away, and then what you have is the cylinder then forces that onto the chain itself, and it starts to wear away the chain. 
So that is particularly nasty if it wears away the chain and you, you get chain failure. So that's the second failure mode. And with the second failure mode, all these bits come apart a lot smaller than this normally because they get mangled up in the chain as they break up and they end up in the bottom of your sump and they block the sump pickup. They all pick up from your sump into your engine. So it it's if you when you actually um end up changing these, one advice is obviously go to the metal ones. So you don't have the first failure mode of the cracking because it's all metal, it doesn't crack. So you get you always get the pressurized cylinder, no failure. And the tops fundamentally this plastic top is much more robustly designed and less likely to break down. Uh, so that's the two points of failure for the original version cam ch secondary cam chain tensioners and why the new metal versions are much better and work. Here we have the uh, primary uh, cam chain tensioner and the two primary cam chain tensioner guides. So this, uh, this uh, primary cam chain tensioner sits in this little slot here and pressure and basically this one guide pivots and that it applies pressure and takes the slack out of the chain. You can see there's a slight wear on the um, the guide itself but otherwise in very very good condition. The other guide however um, is split in two, the plastic is split in two. Um, there's another crack over here. You can see that. But otherwise, this is from an 80,000, 25 year old car. It's in very good order, to be honest. And this plastic isn't actually going anywhere. I'm trying to pull it apart. It's, it's very, very um, sound. Obviously this crack's opened up. You can see the holes here. The plastic is moved um, to the left. But inside the engine, it's, um, it, it's, it's fixed at this point and at this point, albeit with a with a slot, so that plastic isn't going anywhere. So this this guide is going to fail. The failure mode, if anything, is the is the tensioner again, which can crack. Uh, these this hydraulic uh, piston is fed from hydraulic pressure from the engine again from the engine oil. They can crack and lose pressure on startup, but even without pressure, these. Um, there isn't enough slack in the chain for it to jump a tooth and cause serious damage, I believe. And this is why some people, ad people advise not to change these, or it's not necessary. And I would say, looking at this, based on my 80,000 mile, 25 year old car, you're probably right, but I did change them out and I put new ones in. Um, there you go, and you can see even this tensioner hasn't got a crack in really good nick. There you go. Fact number five, how to check your uh, secondary cam chain tensioner. So the first question is, can you check your cam chain tensioner type easily without chain taking the cam cover off? The simple answer is no. Try to explain why. The uh, actual tensioner is situated here. Now the cam cover has the is molded to take the uh, spark plugs now even with the, the full load breather disconnected the breather actually goes in and there's a baffle pointing this way so it's not as if you can get a scope in here and look around the corner it's actually quite a long baffle on the other side of the engine obviously there is the oil filler but the same applies actually here there's a, a spark plug cavity so right next to the the cam chain tensioner so there's no way of actually getting inside a scope to have a look so unless you fancy drilling a hole just about here which is a bit counterproductive to be honest there's no way of checking the cam chain tensioners without taking the cam chain tension ca uh, the cam cover off if you're interested in how to check your cam chain tensioner I've, got, I've made a video detailing how to get the cam cover off that's uh, EP1A okay fact number six special tools you're gonna need 
If you do want to change your cam chain attention yourself, you're doing, there's two uh, tool sets you're going to need. The first is the crankshaft pulley removal tool set. That includes a lever to hold the pulley while you're undoing the, the bolt and an actual pulley to remove the bolt off the crankshaft. Here's a, a couple of, of, well, there's the two tools that I made myself, the holding pulley lever. There's lots of people uh, got ideas how to make these. I've actually made a video giving you the size of the pulley if anybody's interested in making their own. The other uh, tool set you're going to need is the locking timing kit. Now these are very, very cheap, available on Amazon and eBay. Um, you basically need the the two uh, bars to lock the cams and there's a, a pin to lock the uh, drive plate. And there's also um, a VVT um, adjustment tool and a uh, sprocket tensioner tool. So here are the, on the left you can see the the use of the cam locking bar. Now this is critical on uh, an AGA V8 because the sprockets are not keyed to the cr to the the camshafts. They're actually loose fitted. There's just uh, fr friction holding them on. So you've got to be sure the the camshafts don't move while you're um, doing the job. On the right hand side, you can see there's an access through the uh, the sensor hole to to the dr drive plate locking position, and you just push a pin in there and fix it and that locks your crankshaft. Those two kits are very, very cheaply available to buy. I uh, recommend buying those and doing the job properly. Uh, I've actually made a video reviewing the contents as EP9. I've also done a video of how to tension your uh, AGA26NA uh, VVT unit because there's not much information about it. Fact number seven, basic part kits. Unfortunately, AJ26, AJ27 and AJ34 are all slightly different. Um, not, not with the timing kit, but with the uh, auxiliary items. For example, AJ26 has a VVT unit or AJ27 has a CVVT unit. So the O-rings are slightly different. There's also a difference in the, the crankshaft pulley in AJ26 and AJ27. AJ27 needs an O-ring and it also got a locking collar. So basically you need to be sure which type of engine you have and get the appropriate kit. I have done a video on timing kits of the typical contents, that's EP15. And I've also done a video on uh, EP17 on different guide types. So one of the more critical elements of the actual uh, timing kit itself is the type of guide you want. There's some very, very cheap ones out there uh, and you do get what you pay for. So please have a look at that video before you buy your timing kit. Fact number eight, when you're in there, you'll find you probably need to do other jobs. It's probably not just timing gear. So while you're in there, you probably want to change your water pump, your tower if you've got a, um, your uh, coolant tower, if you've got a, a, an ordinary X8, obviously XKR doesn't have that, but you probably want to upgrade that if you've got an XK8. You also need to change the, uh, probably change the um, thermostat while you're in there, plus probably the oil, um, the filter, you're going to flush the coolant, it all adds up. It's a big job. Fact number nine then, sump check. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you're going to have to check your sump, uh, particularly if you get your um, secondary timing, timing change tensioners out and the, uh, the plastic feet have gone off the top of the piston because they're going to be in your sump pickup. So you simply need to drop the sump off, pick them out with your finger, and uh, put it back on again. There, I've done a video on how I did it, EP41, if you're interested. Fact number 10, torque trick. It's not really a torque, it's more of an observation, a trick, should I say. The crankshaft pulley torque is massive, 364 newton meters. So you'd be very lucky if you've got a torque wrench to uh, put that back on. Getting it off isn't a problem, you just need big long bars, but putting it back on again and reaching that torque is is an issue you need to buy a big torque wrench i actually did but um what i observed at the same time was there actually is two torque settings or two methods of torquing uh, i believe with the aj27 it has a uh, the uh, crankshaft pulley has this um uh, locking sort of ring 
in which case it's advised uh, to use three 64 newton meters to three 86 newton meters. However, without the locking cone, you can torque it up to 80 newton meters plus 80, which was in my case. And um, I didn't need to buy my big torque wrench. I just needed to get 80 newton meters and tighten it up another 80 degrees. What I did do at the time was actually with my uh, large torque wrench, I actually monitored the torque uh, from 80 newton meters plus the 80, and it was 360 newton meters. So if you haven't got a big torque wrench, you can get away with, with, with that, I believe. I did a video on it, EP28, no surprise, if you want to have a look at that. So my advice, if you've got any doubt what cam change tensioners you've got, get the engine number, check them, do it now because if you don't it's going to be very very expensive even more expensive than not doing them and they're failing i say if you want to know more details there's a full list of um, more videos in that uh, upgrade tensioner playlist or cam chain tensioners and guides playlist on my youtube channel thank you very much for watching hopefully that was interesting and useful for anybody who's got an aga 26 particularly pre-model year 2002 Thank you very much. Please like, comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more XK videos.